And we are back. This is Mike Kegley. I on the Illini with Matt Stevens. Matt has come back from interviewing players and coaches after this uh, thrilling 50 to 49 overtime victory over Purdue. I don't know that I've seen too many games that swung back and forth as far and as hard as this this game did. Matt, let's just go first with your general thoughts on what you saw this afternoon. To win, I mean, it's it's that. I mean, Illinois usually loses this game, right? I'm not, but you know what? I'm not going to try to put lipstick on this pig. Illinois didn't play well. Um, if you want to take solace in the idea that Illinois didn't play well and they won, I totally get that. Like, I'm I'm with you. Trust me, I'm with you. Uh, uh, but. That's not the performance you were hoping for, not only coming out of the bye week, but probably against one of the worst P4 teams in the country. Um, and I really only have like one explanation for it is that, you know, if you if you if you had been preparing. Look, Brett Bielema made it plainly obvious, at least in, in his post game, that the defense decided decide, the defense was preparing for Hudson card and then found out on Thursday, like everybody else that he wasn't going to play. And so now we're going to get a whole bunch of quarterback run and quarterback power. And basically Purdue's going to run the triple. Um, and so now we've got 12 hours to prepare for the triple. I highly encourage anybody to go ask a defensive coordinator at any level, high school, college, or if you can find him in the professional level, because I know a couple that, in the college level, that that would be an absolute nightmare is to have to prepare for the triple with like 12 hours of preparation and only a walkthrough to be able to do it. Um, you saw Illinois not be able to adjust in the second half once Purdue got their feet wet offensively and figured out how to make an adjustment to what they were doing offensively. Um, when you face the triple, I think a lot of you have one way to defend it. And if they make an adjustment, it's really hard for you to adjust in the sense of, you know, it's just, it's, it's such an eye discipline offense that you have to make the adjustments on the fly. And if your eye discipline's bad, that's, that's going to take some film work for you to do it. And so they have the tablets on the field, but I don't know if that was even going to solve it. So um, you saw the quarterback, you know, Ryan Brown do what he did today because Illinois wasn't prepared. And, and that's concerning, um, but it's also understandable, I guess, if, if, if Purdue did a really good job of hiding the Hudson card injury until Thursday, and, and, then, and that's what you saw. Um, I thought you saw a very um, evenly matched football game. I don't think you saw a very competitive I – w- I won't call this a competitive football game because I don't think either team played very well. Um, but I don't think uh, – I don't think Brett Bielema's head hits the pillow all that pissed off tonight, um, but I don't think his head hits the pillow tonight all that encouraged about what he saw over 60 minutes today. So, um, a lot of mixed, a lot of mixed emotions about what you saw today, and 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 yet Illinois is five and one and two and one in the Big Ten. So, um, it's another W, and usually, again, like I said, Illinois usually loses these games. So. Um, but if you're, if you're Brett Bielema and you're trying to build the program that way, um, if, if you play 12 of these in a regular season, you know, you're going to have one. And if this is your one, cool. The problem is, is that there's a lot of things that I think Illinois knows that they've got to get figured out and, and they did not get figured out over the bye week that are just fundamental that I, I think they've got to, they've got to try to come up with answers before Michigan comes to town next weekend. Yeah. I, I look at this team and I get conflicted because. I see a game at Kansas that Illinois <clears throat> didn't have their A game and they figured out a way to win it. And I saw a game at Nebraska where they they found a way to win it. And at this game, they found a way to win. And you, I just didn't think I would see Illinois unable to stop the rush and unable to rush the ball consistently. I just didn't think they'd be, you know, if you would have told, if you would have asked me, Matt, they're not going to have good interior defensive line. I, before the season, I would have said, yeah, we, we see that coming in. The offensive line was supposed to be pretty good this year. And it's, it's struggled at both pass protection and 
run, you know, run blocking. And if you would have told me they're going to be five and one with that combination of both lines, not playing very well, I would have wanted to drug test you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't feel great about the defensive line in August. I didn't feel great about the offensive line in August. And I'll be honest because you were one, one of the had, few people who was who was saying that it wasn't as good as what. Yeah, was, I just was I felt like well, first of all, the new pieces on tackle were going to have to gel. That worked out better than I think anybody had thought. Um, but we're on like an eighteen month deal now of, um, you know, <laughs> I've never been high on on some of the interior guys that they have, and and the guys that I have been high on, our, our subscribers really don't like. So. <laughs> do the math um, on that. So they tried Brandon Henderson today at guard. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not discouraged by what I saw. Uh, but when like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into preacher mode because our subscribers can't stand that, I guess. So, but this is what happens when you don't run the ball. I mean, you, you allow Purdue to, to do what they did. And, but also, you have to understand Illinois scored on their last four possessions. And if they hadn't done that, they lose the football game because that, that's went- the part that I, that's the part that I think is so interesting here because we are seeing the anti Bielema Illinois. They are a team that, that can go out and throw up 50 points, but yet they give it up, which is not neither one of those is characteristic of Brett Bielema. I I will say that the part that got me is if first off, I would have said this was a loss, but I I wouldn't have thought it was possible to give up 40 points to Purdue in a half. Yeah. In a half. Right. (laughs) I I just, Um, I I didn't think that was possible. Look, I think, you know, Bielema kind of said it, which was, especially in that second half, all of the bad happened. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you if you could have laid out every bad thing that could have happened for Illinois, it happened. And then, you know, you're, you're doing the 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 un- the ability of, hey, I guess we're, we're just going to try to score, you know, shot for shot with them. Um, and, and credit Luke Altmaier and the wide receivers. They, they did that pretty well. Um, but I mean, I, Mike, I'll, I'll just like. This is the first stinker that Aaron's put up, I guess, this year, right? Though, like, I thought, but, defense- but it was, it, the, I think, you know, and, and I think the reason why it was drastically people, bad. Don't get me wrong. Well, yeah, I was going to say because it was if, if this was against if, if this was against Oregon, you'd be like, okay, you know, we we right. we you know, but 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 the Purdue offense has not no. There's nobody in this country who's confused the Purdue offense with Oregon. No, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> And quite frankly, there's nobody that's confused the Purdue defense with, you know, uh, with Ohio State, right? I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's. So, what was Brett's mood? What was his mood coming after this? Because I, I have to be honest with you, as an Illini fan, I'm always excited when Illinois wins because there's so many times that they haven't. And and I think that if you're an Illini fan and you don't walk away understanding the difference of Brett Bielma being in charge. Illinois wins these games a lot more often than they have pre I, yeah. I, I, I We can look at that any way you want to cut it. So, so that's a good thing. But how do I just kind of wonder, like, what, what was his mindset as you went down there? I don't know what you expected, but what did you get when he talked when he talked to you? I expected a more pissed off coach even after a win, and I didn't get it. And okay. and, and, and I got and I understand why. They scored more one more point than Purdue did, and this game, for whatever reason, was really, really personal for Brett Bielema. I don't and think it was. Per- I don't think it was personal for anybody else on the sideline. Like I, I'll be on, on our on on Illinois sideline, right? Except for the head football coach. Yeah, but and, maybe and, on and, the other sideline, some people were fired up. Uh, I think they got that out of their system last year during forty four nineteen. Um, okay. and, and I'll, 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 I'm just going to be real with you. Like, I think Ryan's got so many more problems than trying to stick it. Um, I, I Brett wanted this one real bad and he kind of mentioned it. He said, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that they do that piss him off. Literally direct quote. There's a lot of things that 
quote unquote Purdue does now that piss him off. Okay. And these I mean, guys I'm are not, competitive. Not, these guys are competitive. Yeah, these guys to, are competitive. If Brett wants to feel that people. way, he can feel that way. I, I you yeah. know, I'm not his judge, jury, and executioner on that. Like, feel however you want to feel, man. My our subscribers know that. Like, if you want to feel however you want to feel and it doesn't particularly hurt anybody, go for it. Um, I don't understand it, but whatever. Um but this was personal for Brett Bielema. So as long as they had one more point than Purdue, I think he was going to go home relatively pleased. So did he, um, did he say anything that like jumped out at you or, you know, I think he thought that this game was, he acted like he thought this game was going to be tighter. He acted like as a former defensive coordinator, he knew how much of a pain in the butt it was going to be to stop whatever Purdue was going to run offensively when they made the quarterback switch. Um, my problem with that though, is that like, I don't think, I think Purdue did a really, really good job today of running. I mean, if you uh, look, I, I, I have an affinity for the triple. I think actually more power conference schools should actually maybe try and do it. Um, based off of the talent dis distribution, um, that goes on in the sport. Um, but, uh, because it's and, and you talk to any defensive coordinator, you go to AFCA, which I do every year, and you talk to defensive coordinators, they'll tell you it's just an absolute disaster to try to prepare for that in a week. Illinois apparently had like the better part of 12 hours because they thought oh, no, they, it, they it's thought all, was going to play. Well, for fans, look, for fans who, who may not have played football or it was a long yeah. time ago, I played, we played against triple option teams, and every we, we had reads for every position. And, and so I'm going to say this really delicately because it, it was a challenge because a, some people just aren't the brightest lights on the patio. And mm -hmm. so they have a hard time reading the play to understand their key. Other people are smart enough to figure it out. But, but like you said, if you don't get a chance to put reps against it, it's like, okay, I know I have to. And, and for, for example, I, I would tell you that the thing that frustrated me was that the the defensive end or outside linebacker, whoever was the outside guy, didn't keep contain at all. And you have to understand against a running quarterback, it, whether you're pass rushing or whether you're just coming across the line, you have to get a read on where he is and you cannot let him go get, get outside your contain or the whole defense is destroyed. But – that that's hard to do when you're just thinking about it, as opposed to going out and doing reps against it in, in well, fairness. Yeah. To them. And, and, and it's, that's completely accurate. Mike Cagley. And I tried to get that out of Dylan Rosiak when we talked to him. Cause I, I mean, if you talk to the middle linebacker on a defense that has to face this, you essentially have three jobs on every play and you got to do them all well. Like, you know what I mean? So his life had to have been hell all day. And sure enough, he makes the play in overtime. Um, I got news for everybody. That's what Michigan's going to come in in here and do next week. Like, I mean, they're going to the, run. The they're going to run it fifty times a half, man. I'm just talking about schematically. That's almost exactly what they do, especially if they play the uh, the um, the Alex Ogre kid. Like, I mean, if 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 they're going to play Tuttle, which I don't think he's completely healthy, like, then it's kind of a different, little bit of a different offense. But if it, it but if if they play ten who they came, who started the game at Washington, that's what they run is it's, it's literally just an RPO triple option offense with a, you know, back, you know, backdoor passing attack that doesn't really like, they don't really have it in the bag because they don't feel like they have to, because we're handing it to two five-star running backs, or we have a quarterback that's a really good athlete. Or we're, he's just, but that's what Michigan's going to come in here and run. So Illinois has got to figure some stuff out in a week. And, and, and this is the first challenge of, of, of Aaron Henry. Um, so we'll see. Um, but I, I, I have to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not overly optimistic. I will say that. Yeah, am I, I trust the I trust the DBs more and I would almost be tempted to put eight men in a box and play my DBs man to man. Not that they're great, but they do, they do a decent job. And I like my odds of man to man coverage against Michigan with a poor quarterback and solid receivers. <clears throat> I like those odds a lot better than Michigan's offensive line and those running backs. You know, I agree with I, Mike. I agree with you. 
if Xavier Scott's healthy, he wasn't healthy today. He got hurt in pregame warmups. So now we're going to like yeah. quarterback two and quarterback three and quarterback four. And I'm like, man, I don't feel great about this. Like, and, and in the second half, Purdue exposed the man that Illinois was playing because they had to get all the way up to the line of scrimmage to stop, you know, the, the quarterback power and the quarterback, no, I, the quarterback I realm. So it, Purdue ex- exposed. Well, like I said, you break contain. You break contain. That's that's the danger of a goal. Look, for kids who play, you know, college football. You know, the 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 video game. You know, you you can play. You can go ahead and play goal line defense every play, and you can stop people. But then you'll give up five seventy yard passes. You know, right. <laughs> and, and so, um, and I'm also told that like you know Ryan had a whole bunch of say on what was being called offensively today. Like, yeah, it looked like he was play calling. I mean, I mean, it, it looked that way, right? And yeah. so, um, kudos to him for like, first of all, knowing he knows that defense, <laughs> he knows that Illinois defense. And I don't have, you know, Hudson cards. So how how can I f- make this a competitive football game? And so, and and you know, they made it a close football game. Uh, they made it a competitive football game on their end. I mean, I don't think they played very well either. But I, I mean, they're outmanned um flat out I, I i think their roster is flat out outmanned um but um yeah th- this this is not an encouraging win but it's also not a deflating loss that if purdue oh, it, gets the, the two point uh, purdue gets the two point play we're having a completely different well, conversation that's that's my point exactly so i i don't i don't tend to i know that most fans disagree with me and they think i'm trying to give um fluff to the court to the coaches but i gotta be honest as a guy who spent you know 15 years of my life coaching aau ball i i never gift i I never look a gift horse or a win in the mouth i i'm like you know what if i can win yeah they're too hard to get right yes because when you're playing because the other team wants to win really badly right so so um go ahead any any other comments that he made that you were you were surprised on or anything um (laughs) I know why he made it because if that's ruled a fumble, then Luke essentially lost you the football game, but he's still on a career night for Luke Altmeyer. He's still doing the whole, he's holding on to the ball too long. That, that was clear. And and that's, and, and that's fine. Should, that's, yeah. that's, that's an honest, you know, whatever, but, but I don't know if 2023 Luke Altmeyer pulls off what he pulled off today. So, well, I mean, you know, the thing is that yeah, I you, get, you get both, you get both, you get both sides of this, right? This is the Run My Own Business Dream. This is the College is Paid For Dream. This is the Retire Early Dream. This is Busey, where your dreams and possibilities become moments through trusted guidance and expertise, through lifelong relationships. Because we're here to help you achieve the life you've always envisioned. What was really interesting about that, Matt, was when, and I thought this was really cool to see when you were looking at Luke Altmeyer, is after that fumble and he was on the sideline, he was still smiling positive, you know, with guys in the ensuing drives. And I thought that was would have been a real easy time for him to, to get, you know, kind of unnerved. And I, I didn't think at any point, he seemed, and maybe he's just a better poker player than than we like to think he is. But I thought that he kept himself very positive and didn't didn't get um, you know out of out of sorts. And 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 that would have been there have been an excuse to do that, right? It sure. been really I mean, I, I've written about this, Mike. I think welcome to the new Luke Altmeyer. and I think you can you can you can you know thank the work that he did in the off season, you know, mentally and emotionally was specifically like his sports psychologist that, that, that everybody around him was telling him to go see it, it's paid off in two games. I think, I think it paid off in the Nebraska game when you saw the, the face mask that could have completely unnerved him and, and, and could have ended the night there and it didn't. Um, and then you, you saw, you know, the fumble and then they go into overtime and he's looking over at Bielema and going, I think we ought to go that way. Cause that's toward our band. Like, and I, that'd be, that's the way that I think we ought to go. And I mean, Bielema's was Belichickying this and going, yeah, I was going to go that way anyway, but my, my quarterback's already thinking like that. So he mentioned that in the post game. Um, it's a, it's a criticism of, that Bielema has of Luke um, 
that I think he continues to ring home because it week after week after week, he's seeing it after with Luke and um, it's a fair one. Um, but he also had a career night and was the reason you probably won this football game other than also um, <laughs> leave it up to me. I guess I made him cry. I made Bielam a cry again today because tonight, because I mentioned Josh McCray and for people that still don't, that don't remember or need a, need a refresher course. The first scholarship offer for Brett Mielema as the Illinois head coach was Josh McCray. And, and I, I detailed that a long time ago. You can go find it on the line. I guys, maybe I'll dig it up again. Um, but one of Brett Mielema's best friends was a high school coach who used to be in Wisconsin, who is now whatever, whatever reason in Dothan, Alabama um, is Josh McCray's high school coach. Um, and, and the reason that Brett gets, you know, emotional about this one is because Josh McCray is his first. I mean, and, and that's, that's always going to be special to him, but also Josh has had some, some trials and tribulations. And I think you've seen him, you know, maybe get through the other end of that because he looked like again, and we say this a lot, but he looked like freshman Josh McCray again at, at certain points tonight. Um, and today I will tell you, uh, you know, he's been through a lot and I'm not just talking about the injuries because the injuries are a lot, but you know, he lost his mom, like while he was in high school, lost his grandmother right before he showed up in Champaign. His grandmother loved Brett Bioma, um, loved him to death before she passed away. So Josh has had a lot of reasons to say, this isn't going to work out for you kid. And he continues to come back. And I thought he was a huge reason they won the football game today. And, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, if you want to, you want to X's and O's this thing, his ability to be a weapon out of the backfield for Luke Altmeyer has been a complete game changer for Josh McCray. And, and, and he is the one guy right now in that running back room who has proven to be somebody that can do that as a, as a, as a natural weapon. And, and I think that going forward, um, you're going to see that more. And one of the reasons you're going to see that more is I said it in the game room and I, I, and I said it because I didn't see anything physically on his body during warmups. He wasn't dressed out obviously, but I think Caden Fagan's going to be out for a little bit. And, and Bielema kind of said it's a hyper extension of his left leg um, during Tuesday of inside drill. Um, and it's not good. And, and I'm not saying he'll be gone the rest of the year, but I don't think he'll, I, they're not anticipating him being active for Michigan. So what you got now is you got Josh McCray. And, and based on what I saw today, if you give Josh McCray 20, 20 touches, that might work out well for you. And I'm not talking about 20 carries. I'm just talking about getting him the football yeah. maybe 20 times. Um, that works out well. He had three touchdowns today. And he had, what, five yards of carry. I mean, this is going to work. I think the other thing you saw today that um, Illinois has been preparing for, I think it's a, it's a wraparound. Illinois has been – like it's funny because what did we say last year, Mike, in West Lafayette? I was sitting here right here telling you um, – I had just gotten done with post game interviews and and I, I literally had to you know spill the tea immediately. Isaiah Williams is standing on the field telling every media member who was willing to listen they were calling out our signals. Were they doing it again this it year? It was embarrassing. Here we got the flip side of that today, which was basically the offensive guys at Illinois saying we knew exactly what they were going to do on defense because we we've been running against this defense since last spring. It's the same defense. Like, yeah. and so I thought that was weird in the sense that like, <laughs> like, yeah, but it was the same defense that you were preparing for last year when you went to West Lafayette, but it's an older, more mature group. Um, and what I mean by that is this group and this offense and these coaches and these players have been preparing for, have been looking at that that bare front since the spring, since fall camp in August, right? And one of the things that they've been preparing for, because nobody really consistently pair, plays the bare front that Illinois does, again, except for Purdue, Luke Altmaier is a really good athlete, folks. And I, I think if you take away the sack numbers, he had 90 yards rushing today. Yeah, he would have. You're right. So I'm sitting here and I'm going, they have, they have been waiting for months to employ – the RPO action where Luke pulls it out of the belly and then just goes around the edge because they they, they didn't set the edge on defense. And, right, and and yeah, just like Illinois did. Right, and you saw that today because <laughs> Luke's a Luke's Luke's a former baseball player. He Luke's a former basketball player. He's a really good athlete, and you saw that today. So, and you also saw, I thought, you know, Josh McCray go, 
oh yeah, I, I know what to do in, against this front because they're not, they're gonna they're gonna clog up the a gap. So then I just stick my foot in the ground and I don't dance and I go right. north and south and that that works. And then you saw Pat Bryant. So Ellen, so Purdue gets so Purdue finally takes the lead, forty three forty. What do you see from Pat Bryant? Well, Pat Bryant knows, like, well, they're going to play. They're still going to play man. Like, and and sure enough, they played Pat Bryant and man, and he got behind them and made a big play, and now you can get the field goal, right? So um, you saw Illinois' offensive guys go, we've seen this before. We've seen this for months. We've been repping this for months. So the opposite effect for, of Illinois' offense was they've been repping against this for months. So they were confident. The Illinois defense had been repping against this for 12 hours in a, in a non-contact walkthrough um, yeah. and did not feel confident. So I, I guess I'm grasping at straws for maybe excuses because, look, the Illinois defense played terrible. And, 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 and they have a lot to answer to tomorrow when they look at film. But I, I think the Illinois offense looked confident because – they they've they've taken recognition of of what they've seen and, and they've been able to use it and so that's why Illinois is able to put up 50 points and 40 plus points against a Purdue defense that um you know needs to probably play less man but I'm not sure that they know how to do that because they sure played a lot of zone last week against Wisconsin and and that a lot didn't of look good either. <laughs> well they left I mean they're, yeah. they're, you're yeah. playing zone and, and you're you know yeah you're the deep you're the deep safety and you're you know I watched it. I watched a lot of that game last week in Madison, where they're 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 they're, they're leaving their receiver off to oh shoot nobody. Like I saw that a lot too. So, um, you know, kudos to Brett Bielema for for being able to pull this out. Kudos to the whole staff for being able to figure out a win. But also kudos to the visiting sideline for at least showing something. Like after yeah. what has been a really really tough start in West Lafayette, and I think you saw something where hey, you know, I. I think you saw something in which that was like, Hey, we don't really have to fire this guy after our bye week So I'll, I'll go that far. Let's, so let's, let's, uh, to me, that's a hard situation. If, you know, you just gotta, you have to know what everybody's agenda is. I mean, somebody could have it out for him or, you know, I would think you want to save $9 million, but that's just me. He's also got to look, I'm, I'm just, I'm, if we're going to do this, he's got an athletic director that wants to keep him desperately wants to keep him. And so if you're an athletic director that watches that tonight, damn it. You, I mean, look, we yeah. just said it, right? These don't happen very often, so you got to win them. Like, no, I agree. When you win them, like they don't; like, these are hard, so you got to win them. But um, they didn't quit. They had every probably excuse to quit on Ryan Walters and this entire staff. And I didn't see a whole lot of quit in Purdue. I just didn't see a whole lot of um, consistent execution on defense. Um, so, um, but I didn't see that out of the home team in blue either. So. Um, like I said, I don't feel like it was a competitive football game, but it was a close football game and it was an entertaining football game. So yeehaw. Like, you know, yeah, I mean, I got, I got to think for the recruits yeah. Illinois had, this was a fantastic game for them to watch because they're just looking for excitement. They, they're, they're not sitting there going, well, we should have done this or that, you know, they're just saying, oh, that was great. And we won. I, I also well, they stayed to... the whole time too. I can verify that because we, oh, have that's to, what I'm we, saying. Have, we have, we have to get through this. We have to get through the recruiting section to get onto the field with five minutes to go and they all stayed. So it, that's, that's a good sign too. I got to wonder if, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce that kids uh, 31 for uh, Purdue. Um, uh, are you talking about safety or are you talking about Maccabee? Uh Safety. Maccabee is 45, right? No, no. 31, Thieneman. the safety. Yeah. Thieneman. I, I got to yeah, wonder older, if he's going to older go brothers played at Purdue. He's a legacy. Okay, so I was going to say, because otherwise, I, I, if I was him, I'd be going like, okay, I can play somewhere a lot better than this and have a huge impact because he's he's quite a player. Um, he is. I think he's an NFL player, um, definitely. I think uh, we're talking about one of those Purdue legacy deals, Mike, where mommy and daddy both went to Purdue, older brothers both played and went to Purdue. I'm going to go to Purdue too. So, I, I mean, I covered his older brother at Purdue in 2018, like – we all knew Dylan was coming. So like, yeah, he's a really good player oh my um, gosh. In, the, in, in, in the back of Purdue's defense. I mean, he saves their bacon on so many different ways. Oh, um, I, j yeah. Just, you know, they can play him back as a one, one, one deep and <clears throat> he can cover or he can solve. He's their version the right now of Ed Reed because there's a whole lot going on up front. Yeah, a whole lot that's of wrong. And, and he, yeah. he makes up for it a lot of, a lot of the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, any other coaches besides Bielema come up and talk today? Hmm. No, we don't ever get any coaches other than yeah. Bielema after games. So, and then I think this is a, this is a, I think this is a game where Aaron Henry is best to 
get in the bunker and try to figure some stuff out. Um, and Barry Lunny's, but, but what is probably he, going uh, home and have crack, cracking open a beer and going, I, I you know, God, I'm not the I earned my money. Like I earned my so, money tonight. So though, what, but, but there, there has to be an improvement. Like Illinois fans, they, they struggle because there's a lot of Illinois fans. I can't believe this is happening. And of course, it, thankfully the, the Illini had a couple times they could have quit and they didn't. To, to their credit, because, you know, right. with 40, for 43 seconds left, you know, that wasn't a likely comeback. When I was but 43 they, and 40, I thought Illinois was going to lose. So, yeah, I, yeah, I thought the odds were strong, you know. I mean, right. and and the bottom line is, is this team doesn't quit, which is which is something that, that if you read Steve Sturm's football recruiting spotlights is is something that they recruit for. And you can, you can see it on film, every player that – Bielma gets is a guy who has at least a few effort plays that they come and do something after being blocked or or whatever and they manage to get to 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 accomplish something but they've got a you know NIL or whatever they've got to close the deal on some defensive linemen and some oh, some wow. linebackers cuz you you they're just uh there's that's just a challenge I mean, yeah, I, I mean, look, they're playing a former walk on Ryan Mead right now. A lot yeah. of snaps. I mean, yeah. they're playing if it's so and if it's not Ryan Mead, it's James Crutes, who's 15 pounds too light and didn't have a whole lot of D1 or FBS scholarship offers to begin with. Or it's Kiana Agaluga, who didn't have any D1 scholarship like uh, FBS scholarships and was going to go Ivy League if he didn't you know, get a late scholarship offer from Illinois. Those are your middle linebacker op uh, options right now that aren't named Dylan, Dylan Rosiak, who took some arrows, I think, unwilling, uh, unwillingly before, you know, the, before we, I think he took some arrows after the Penn State game where I'm like, dude, like, my guess is you need to like, figure out a way to like not have a 300 pounder sitting on Dylan. Like that would be, yeah. a, that would be, that would be ideal. Um, and, and that, that's what happened in happy Valley. I thought he played really well in, 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 in at Nebraska. And I thought, you know, he would be the first one to tell you probably he was, he was probably not the best in terms of eye discipline with the quarterback stuff today. But, you know, again, we get into overtime and he made a play. So, yeah. I mean, but yeah, I think you're, I think you're, you're a linebacker short. And I think um, that could get solved with off season work with James Cruz, because if he's 230 pounds instead of 215, we're talking, we're, we're having a different conversation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, because he's insane. Like, and, and, and I say that in a good way, like he he's Olin's son, like he's insane. He throws his body around in a way that I don't think he's going to last the whole year. And, but Sure enough, he's made it through six games. You know, I keep thinking if East if Easton Baker can just put the the weight on the way he throws his body around. Holy cow! Yeah, and and Easton Baker, look, but here's the thing: Easton Baker's going to come in here at 220, 220 Right, that's what I'm saying. He's going to be fifteen pounds too light, right. light in the butt to, to for him to play. Um, and and I want to make this very clear because I've seen or I've already seen this in the post game thread. Like this is not me saying Ryan Mead should play. This is me relaying to you that Archie McDaniel thinks that Ryan Mead should play. Um, so if you want to you want to get mad at somebody, don't get mad at me. Get mad at like the coach that is telling you, "Hey, I have a whole lot of more experience than you. I'm going to play this kid." So you know if you're an Illini guy subscriber on that one, you're probably just going to have to eat it. Um, By the way, has, Matt, this is the first game that I've ever seen that wasn't a video game that the red zone attempts for both teams was 13 for 13. And they should have been, right? <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, yeah. that's not shocking. And, and um, your red zone points, your red zone points was uh, was a grand total of 75 combined with both teams. I got one for you, Mike. Do you know that the only time that Illinois has not come away with points in the red zone is the end of the half at Penn State? Yeah, that's it. They, I, they are. What are they now? Like 23 of 24 in the red zone this year. Like it's I mean, we 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 had this concert. I mean, this is, again, a Barry Lunny thing. Like we couldn't figure out exactly what Illinois red zone problem was last year. And this year they've figured it out. And and so, yeah. I, so to summarize this whole thing. Yeah, Mike, I've been saying for months, the defensive line's got to get improved. Yeah. Um, but that's not going to happen in the next six games. Um, you got what you got. Right, and nobody's well, hurt. Or, or right. you got to, or you got to schematically figure out some right. sort of but, band aid 
but that's tough to do because there's only made it so six many games with Dennis Briggs, which thank God because I wasn't sure how long he was his legs were going to last. So he's healthy. T. Rod's still healthy. Uh, Alex Bray's still healthy. Like, and again, let, let's be let's be clear here. If Illinois had the normal depth that you could rotate through six or seven defensive linemen, those guys would be fantastic. If you had those three oh, guys, gonna, yeah, I'm not going to make this argument again. If they if they if they had recruited the way they needed to in 2022, like they would have the D line depth to be able to play right now. And then that goes back to the question that I that I will put, and I'm more than I, right. I'm more on this than most. I don't know. Like, I don't know the it answer. Comes back to you. You you better get. And Illinois fans are like, oh, this this game was horrible. It's like, no. If you didn't, if you thought this game was horrible, then pull out your checkbook and figure out how you're going to donate to icon for the Illini because the only way out of this and I, and I hate to say this but the most and, and you can you can argue with me here but there's only one position that costs more on the open market than defensive line and that's quarterback so if you need to get with the a, rare exception of running back that I've seen but yes I agree yeah and so if you need – Illinois is not going to get – they're not going to recruit some 20, 25 kid who's going to walk in here next year and make a difference on the football field. That just – that even defensive linemen, it, it, that is so rare that that happens even at Ohio State, let alone Illinois. So right. that means you're going to have to find on the open market a defensive tackle or two that you can afford, and you're going to – just by definition, you're going to have to overpay. But you're also seeing the reason why next week is so important, too, because, boy, wouldn't Jimmy Roller look really good in an Illinois uniform right now? And he plays for Michigan. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, he, and he went to Marist High School in, in, in suburban Chicago. Like, and his dad played offensive line for the University of Illinois. Scott Kehoe played yep. and was, a, was an, I think, an All-American at Illinois, um, or at least an All-Big Ten player at Illinois. Um, he'd look really good, in a, in a, and he would start in that Ryan Mead position on the Illinois defense right now at middle yeah. linebacker. And he'd be really good. He'd probably be all Big Ten because um, he's probably going to be all Big Ten at Michigan. Um, yeah. uh, but wouldn't, like, be, wouldn't be playing well, behind quite a duo of tackles, but yes. <laughs> sure, but, like, he'd still be. I, I watched yeah, him. He'd be good. I, watched I, I know him, he's good. Yeah, yeah he I, mean, I watched him at high school make a whole bunch of tackles. Like, so, yeah. I also think um, he was, uh, he, you know, when you beat – if and when you can beat Michigan – on a national televised stage that changes the dynamic too. So you're, 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 you're arguing the point of why next week is so big too, but next week is big because I don't think, I think Illinois walks in here thinking that they can and probably should win if they play well, but also knowing that if they play defense, like they did today, they're not going to like, I gotta be honest with you going to. as, as a, again, I'm an Illinois fan, but I got to call it the way I see it. I, I'm, I'm worried next week. We're going to see, 350 to 400 yards of rushing because Michigan say what you want. They have the discipline more than probably only Brett Bielma would do it more than Michigan would. But if they go, well, look, I've, I've run it. This reminds me of high school. We had a coach one time we ran a dive dive, right. We ran it like 18 plays in a row because we got like nine yards or more. And so we just kept running dive, right. And Michigan will go, well, you didn't stop it. We'll just, keep running it until you do it's the same offensive coordinator who's now the head coach who decided he wasn't going to throw a forward pass last year at penn state and exactly won. and i and so i i think if illinois can't figure it out i do think it could be like that now beal is a smart guy but they're going to have to schematically figure out you know how do we how do we protect the interior guts of the def- defense against the run and then what do we do on the guard center guard gap on offense that has been a struggle with the best two defensive tackles we will run into all year because these guys are better than Penn State's duo. Yeah, and I'm going to I'm going to have to look at the film review to see if Illinois was really that bad or if, you know, Penn yeah, Purdue just dropped dropped their edges so bad that Luke decided to just pull it out and just run, right? You know what I mean? So that's one of those things, but yeah, I, I think uh I think having a look look, here's the thing. Um I'm, I'm, I'm look. I'm. I feel like I'm trying to make excuses for Illinois, but they did win the football game. No, I agree. That's that's what I'm saying. So they they won. Illinois and... goes into next week, Mike. They have the better quarterback. I don't care who Michigan plays. Um, Luke Altmyer is better than him. I, I don't. I don't care who one of the either one of the three that they have. Luke Altmyer is better than all three of them. 
So that's a good thing. I, I think I think Illinois has better receivers than Michigan. I don't know the last time that's ever happened. Um, and if Xavier Scott plays, um, because I think Michigan's All-American corner isn't healthy. Um, they've had a bye week to get ready, so yay. Um, yeah. But but you know I think Michigan's defense is still elite, but. Um, you know, Washington did prove that if we hang on and, and, and hang on and hang on, we'll bust something and we'll, we'll, we can do some stuff if we have a quarterback that gets hot and Will Rogers has been known to get hot and Luke Altmaier tonight proved that he can get hot. So he ca- look, he carried it, even with mistakes that he made, which sure. I, I have yet to see other than, you know, Tom Brady, there are very few quarterbacks who just don't make a mistake all game, right. but yeah. um, I, he carried this Illini team because when they needed him, he either made the pass where it needed to be put, or he did it with his legs. Welcome I, to yeah, again, welcome to confident Luke Altmaier that we didn't see last year. I mean, so. right tonight we saw a guy that if my biggest concern about him is he holds on to the ball for a second or two too late. You and the head football coach at the University of Illinois at Urbana and, Champaign both have. But the same I, I tell you, if he cleans that up, the the only other thing is like uh, like the pass to Pat Bryant there at the end would have been an easier pass if he had let it go about a quarter of a second. To he a hangs on to that sucker yeah. a little too long. Yeah. But, but again, I think the play gets made. I also right. think I also think Brett Bielham is able to understand the confidence level of Luke that with seven seconds left in regulation, they're able to throw a fade and figure out yeah. a way like for Luke to throw a fade and know that he's Luke's going to leave enough time on the clock to at least kick the field goal. I agree. I couldn't figure out what the hell Illinois was doing. I'd have kicked the damn field goal right then. I, 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 I told somebody, I said, you know what I would do? I would go to the middle of the field. I would take a knee and I would say, hey, David, okay, now you kick it. Like, I wouldn't have screwed around with that. And, but I'm, t- and, I'm telling you right there, though, that that's what you do if you're in, if you're in the NFL, you got a quarterback that can drop the ball where you want. You have it. a confident quarterback. Hey, let's and, see if he can make a play, and we don't have to go to overtime, right? Exactly. And that's, that, that's that's where Illinois sits right now with their quarterback and with their wide receiver play, and quite frankly, with their pass protection because I didn't think it was that bad today. Um, so, although uh, he did thirty yards in sacks, I mean, now again, you could argue part but of. But he's in the is, gun a lot, so like yeah. every sack is what like a 10, 11 yards. Yeah. So like you know what I mean. So like. Um, yeah, five, I, didn't think, I didn't think pass protection was that bad. I think I think and, and look, again, two, two of them he, he two of them he should have just Jeff Georged it. There's that, and yeah. then and then look, I'm not trying to get preachy with our subscribers, but for every subscriber that wants to know why Khalil Valentine only plays like a dozen snaps, one of them is because he left his quarterback out there to die, <laughs> like on a sack, just yeah. flat out die. And and you can't do that. And 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 that's when true freshmen go into the film room and go, look, if you if you you cannot do this if we put you out on the field. And um, and that's another thing is that again, Josh McCray has become a really good pass blocker, and he's also become a really good weapon in the pass game. So um, the offense has some answers. The defense, this is the first time where your defense is shaking your head at Illinois and going, like, let's not revert back to what we did last year, man. Like this, this can't happen. So um but Illinois is five and one and two and one in the big 10 and, 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 and they have a lot of things. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Like he did look, Brad Bielema did the, like the high school coach thing, which is he looked us all in the face and was like, y'all realize this is about the best thing that could happen to us. Right. You, you, you get that, right. You, you and, get a win and you can right. yell at them and they'll pay attention to you. That That is it's better. Cause I mean, they know that again, they, they know the, the, you know, they they know the 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 blue and white the the, the I'm sorry the, the the blue and yellow helmet is coming and, and and they're really good like they're not great they're not elite they're not defending that they're not the 2023 national championship elite no nobody no but they but they're a, they're a dumb they're, de- they're a dumb decision to not get a quarterback in the portal if they had a quarterback who could put up you know, could get them to three more touchdowns in a game. All of a sudden that defense isn't on the field as often. And now all of a sudden that defense looks a little more like last year and they're scoring some more points. Right. And with all that, and that, like they that has still, nothing they to do with the come, kids. Right. You know? But they can also like with all of that being true, they can still come in here and champagne and win. I oh, mean, I, no have, that, I have, I so. have no doubt this, they are under, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not, you know, I'm, this pains me to, have to say this about Michigan, but they're, they're underrated. They're, they're, they're better than 24 because they can go out and knock the snot out. They can go toe to toe with anybody. It just depends on how, 
how bad their quarterback play is and yeah you know and, I mean, and again if they if they if they again whatever the three they play but but only better with 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 Alex Ogre, like they better play, they better run, they, they better do their keys on the triple option because that's essentially what he runs, right? So, um, but I, the finality of this game is that, um, uh, look, I think Brett knows how important this one was to him personally. And so I don't think that there was a lot of, hey, this, this was really bad coming out of him. Um, I think, I think if you wanted if you wanted to guarantee Ryan Walters saves his job if they if they complete the two point play I think Ryan Walters is is saved like I, I really do um, I also think that like this Big Ten I'll, I'll leave it at this is that I, I I look yeah I thought I'd see a more angry Brett Bielman I didn't get it so okay cool but like I also know that he could go leave us go into the Smith center and, and, and be a completely different human being. So um, he could be really pissed about this. Who knows? I don't know. Um, I think, I think he has a lot of concerns going into next week and that's, that's, that's what you got. So I, I am. There's nothing new for an Illinois football coach being concerned going into a game with Michigan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I also I think mean, he's concerned about, you know, we got six games left. We're at the we're at the halfway point here, and I've got concerns. And I think that Brett thought um, a lot of those concerns got solved during the bye week, and they very much did not. And so, yeah. um, but but that, you've got look, you've got Michigan, you got Michigan and Oregon, but then you got Mi- Minnesota, Michigan State, Rutgers, Northwestern. So, and so that was two- the point I was about to make, Mike, is that I think beyond four in the Big Ten, I think everybody's beatable, and that includes Illinois. Oh, I yeah, sure enough, Illinois, Illinois, Illinois could go prove that today, right? So Illinois could go zero and six, and to be honest with you, they could go five and one. I don't see much way of them beating yeah. Oregon, but they could go. They could legitimately go five and one. They could end up ten and two this year. Sure. Now, would it take a little bit of luck? Would it take you know no injuries? I mean, there's always those factors, but right. but they could also go zero and six and end up. Or yeah, they could. Yeah, they could go. They could go zero and six. Go zero and six. Go, and and then you would end up, you know, a little frustrated. You end up where exactly where you were last year at five and seven. But yes, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I, so either. But, but I think if anything proved anything today, if you're a Big Ten fan and you've been watching this for now six weeks, six, seven weeks, um, everybody short of Ohio State and Oregon, maybe even apparently Penn State, even though they tried, they tried real hard to lose it in the Coliseum today. But you know that's a big deal for them because they, I think that this, right. this no is doubt. the type of game. I think this toughens them up an awful lot. But I also think, okay, let's let's take, let's take those three and put it away, right? I think everybody else in this league has proven on any given day we can get beat and, ba- <laughs> and badly, right? And, and I'm badly. telling you right now, on Saturday, October 12th, Illinois proved any, on anybody in the league can beat us. Yeah. Anybody in the league can beat us. And so um, I'm not sure who's good beyond the top three in the Big Ten. And and, and I'm not, I won't say that. I'm not sure who's going to show up every week beyond the top three in the Big Ten. I think yeah. that's fair. I well, know who's good. Illinois is good. But see, right? this, this is what I think. Good, right? This is what sets Illinois apart, though. But if Illinois doesn't show up, Illinois will lose. Well, they they will. But I'm telling you, they've they, they've won two games that they didn't have their their best gunpowder, and I would not have thought they could do that. And you didn't think they played well against Nebraska because I thought we had that conversation. And I'm the, like, Nebraska yeah, they played Kansas. okay, but but Kansas they didn't, and certainly today right. they didn't. Right. You know, Kansas. I think, I think the it, Kansas game had some significance in the way that they were trying to not mistake their way to a loss. I, I agree. Um, and, and that's 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 not necessarily playing bad. I, I I thought they played well at Nebraska. Like in that environment, I thought, I, damn it, yeah. I thought Illinois played well. Yeah, no, I just I, I'm just saying that they they have not been able to do what Brett Brett Bielma thinks are two of the three most important things: run the he ball, likes, stop the run, likes, cover Yeah, games. and he, and and uh, I'll be honest with you, if you would if you would set Brett down, and there's no microphones. And you would say, hey, uh, how many of these games are you going to win if you can't stop the run and you can't run the ball yourself? He's going to look at that schedule and tell you that not, not very many. many. And, not many. And, and he's sitting on five and one, <clears throat> which tells me if they can crack the code, you know, maybe maybe it is, you know, 
a, a slight change in the lineup, you know, Wigginton comes in, who knows, you know, but, but, or maybe they have to decide we're going to block it a little differently. You know, I'm not an offense. I've, 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 I hated playing offensive line, but you know, maybe they, they do some, they do something a little different, you know, that we've all seen football coaches who, who know how to coach offensive lines and, and Bielma's probably got a, a Rolodex of different solutions that you try and each one probably is a little less probability of working and you probably need your back a little bit to the wall before you go to the next idea. But, you know, he's got a Rolodex of ideas he can try. And the one thing I, I worry about is, is on the defensive line, what do you do? Because uh, uh, short of, you know, throwing freshmen in there, which just generally. No, you've got what you've got. No, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You've got what you've got. Yeah. And that, yeah. So there you're going to have to, to me, the only thing I can think of is you, at least a guy, a team like Michigan, you bet on the fact that these guys can't throw for you crap. Sell, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's what you're going to see. I, I think it's what you couldn't see today is that because, yeah. they couldn't fully sell out on Ryan Brown today because he might pop pass them. And then suddenly now it's 70 yards down the field. I, I think, again, when you have a week to read the keys, you have a better understanding. I, I to, I'm that's totally not with you. Happen. Um, but I also think, yeah, I, I would I would fully expect Aaron Henry to sell out against the run and say, hey, like, it's not even, hey, you're going to have to beat us throwing the football. No, you're going to have to beat us running the ball into an eight man box. Right. That's exactly. What you're going to have to do. And, and, and short of, like, and look, they've got Donovan Edwards and they've got another freshman that's, going to be a, probably an all-american like they've got one of the two best running back duos in the country along with penn state and when they're healthy too um so they can run into an eight-man box and, and it's the thing i've told everybody else again i'm not trying to get preachy with our subscribers you can walk as many guys up to the line of scrimmage as you want doesn't mean you're going to stop the run right because if you scheme it up and you block it up the way you're supposed to um, three or four of the guys that you walk up to the line of scrimmage are never going to be part of the play because they're going to be so far away from where the ball is going to go that it, it, it's, yeah. it's relevant. It doesn't matter. So um, that's when you're playing in a box, right? And so that means, to your point on Illinois offense, they've got to get better at blocking it up when they play in that small space. And, yeah, because that, that's the really that's the only weakness that they've they've had in that same small quite space. Quite frankly, Mike, I thought in the first half they were a little bit better at it. I, I, I agree. I really did. I, agree. I thought I thought we were seeing three-yard runs and four-yard runs instead of no gains and one-yard runs. I, I agree totally. Part of that was I also think Caden is running too tentatively, and he got a little better the last game, but that doesn't matter anymore. And and I think Josh McCray, we're starting to see him be like his old self. So that's great. Hey, one yeah. quick question. Go ahead. Go where ahead. was Ra where was Resetich today? Was he? I mean, again, like uh, I'm not trying to quote Aaron Henry, but they 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 think their two safeties are better than Mac Resetich. Right, so right. like they don't like to take their safeties off the field. So, I agree. Yeah. So Miles Scott's going to play a lot. And if he can play every snap, like well, if you look at the snap counts that I've been presenting to you on the film reviews, Miles Scott doesn't sit out many snaps. Like, yep. and and then you know Matt Bailey doesn't sit out a whole lot of snaps, right? So, um, where was Mac Rasidich? I think I I'd have to go back and look. He wasn't on the availability report, so he was right. healthy. Um, I'll look tomorrow when I get the snap count whether or not he played a lot. But if he didn't play a lot, it was because. Um, other guys were better equipped at this. And believe program. it or not, like it's it's funny you ask that because Mac Resetich is also part of the contention between the two staffs today, and 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 how um, Brett Bielema tried to claim that they were trying to hide the Mac Resetich recruiting file away from certain guys in his staff because he knew that they were going to leave, and certain other guys who then left for West Lafayette knew that that was total crap. Um, so. Mac Resetich is kind of the part of the inauguration of I don't like you and you don't like me, but not really kind of yeah. thing. So it's funny, but, you know, I, I, he, they think he's going to be really, really good. They just don't think he's Matt Bailey and Miles Scott good. And I agree. Now, the, the other thing we – yeah, Matt Bailey, I mean, a couple of touchdown saving tackles today. I mean, right. that's hard to do that more than once a game. Um, I, I noticed, too, that uh, – and I and we we talked about this in our instant take for a real brief instant, but uh, okay. Colin Dixon really has 
he, you know, he, he's making some big plays out there. And, and Hank Beatty, when you run it out of the end zone, you better get a big one. <laughs> Two things on that. One is that, boy, hasn't Colin Dixon gone from a no-snap guy last year to a guy that really matters this year? And, and he also looks like a different person because he has really gotten – I mean, he's bigger, stronger, mm -hmm. faster. I mean, there's a and guy who – and, and the common, I was going to say, the combination of him and Justin Stepp, the new wide receiver coach, is, is an instant, you know, beautiful relationship because there might not be anybody in the room that Justin Stepp loves, maybe, maybe except for Pat Bryant more than Colin Dixon, right? So that's that, that, that's a, that's, that's a developmental project that, that's, I can't wait to see develop over the next few years. Um, the Hank Beatty thing, first of all, Hank made an unbelievable catch near the end of the game that I thought was really, yeah. really key. He comes yeah. up and makes big plays. The, 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 uh, the punt return at the two, I will <laughs> tell you, I don't know if TV showed it, they did not. Bobby Disher made a beeline for him and basically like <laughs> said, don't you ever do that again. Like, I know you got out to like the 23 yeah, yeah. and that's awesome. You're a hell of an athlete that you were the Gatorade player of the year in high school in Illinois. That's why they recruited you. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> that was the that dumbest was thing you've ever done. Don't ever do it again. Um, and, and that's, I love Robbie to death because he was like, man, you almost got me the biggest ass chewing from my boss that I've ever gotten in my <laughs> life. And then if we're, we're going to quickly mention special teams before we sign out, um, I had I, I, I tried to do some investigative work at halftime. I was trying to figure out if the sky kick was intentional. Um, and I can tell you it was not like yeah. it, uh, Ethan didn't hit it right. <laughs> and but but the wind but the wind did hit it right right and and, and also it it, it backspun toward the receiving or toward the kicking yeah, team exactly um when purdue let it hit the ground which as we know last year like remember the northwestern game last year don't ever let it hit the ground no matter what oh i'm, I'm with the you ground, like so that's on purdue more than it is anything but i kind of thought hey wait a minute did we kind of do some trickery kind of stuff here and do a sky kick just to see if purdue was sleeping and i and i think yeah, they, ret would, they returned the favor later on and, and <laughs> illinois would love to take credit for that i just think ethan didn't hit it right on his foot for the and and it it went out and it, it was a happy accident because you saw when they went and scored after the sky kick, Ethan line drive the hell out of it yeah, through the yeah, end zone. Yeah, they, you know what I mean? Scored, so, yeah. Um, no, I, I, so yeah, Illinois got a special teams, uh, you know, luck, however you want to say it. Um, and, and, and again, I think it, was, it ended up being a huge play in the game because if Illinois doesn't get that and they don't steal a possession that way, Maybe they don't even win the football game. So, yeah, yeah I think special teams-wise, Illinois was pretty on point. Perfect. Well, folks, we're, we're getting up to the hour mark, so we're going to we're gonna let this one go. Thanks, Matt, for letting us do that. Of course, Matt's going to have articles here in the next day or two that will follow up on this. AlinaGuys.com subscribers, enjoy them. So please give us that opportunity if you enjoy what you're seeing right now. Give us a follow on X. And then, of course, the subscription to the Illini guys gets you the full stories, gets you a message board, gets you the stories ahead of time. So we appreciate it. Thank you very much, Matt. And we will talk to you guys with a preview of Michigan coming Monday night. Until then, go Illini.